Hey guys, it's Eric again. Hey, want to uh, talk to you today about suspension setup. Uh, one of the most uh, challenging things I think as a drag racer you're going to have is finding that perfect combination, that perfect setup that you're going to go up there every round and run the number and get the traction in all conditions and uh, have the car respond the way you want. Um, so my previous video, I talked about choosing the right tire and, and slicks to put on your car. Um, if you're if probably you're gonna experience what happened with me I put first time I ever pulled a set of slicks on a car I thought all right well, this is gonna be awesome you know the car is gonna hook and we're gonna set the world on fire which ultimately ended up happening was my traction issue got worse uh, because it started having wheel hop so in other words what happens is is it's too much traction so uh, it wasn't as bad where the car is shook but I heard situations where the car is shook and actually cracked you know an A pillar on the actual body so what I want to do today is I want to quickly talk to you about suspension setup now this isn't like the cure all fix all suspension setup for every car that's out there I just want to give you a basic um, starting point where you can go from and build off of that if you don't mind uh, the first thing you're I want to talk to you about is um, this thing okay it's like Eric what the hell is that okay it's an angle finder it has a magnetic base uh, on it here okay it has a magnetic base on on the bottom as you can see okay and it has your dial obviously and I want to talk about that simply because um, what you want to do is check your pinion angle Pinion angle is obviously with your rear you have a ring gear that is splined to your axles. Your pinion gear is basically where your drive shaft bolts up to. So what ends up happening is when you step off the brake pedal, the clutch, whatever, and you hit the loud pedal, that pinion gear is going to try and climb up the ring gear. That's why when if you watch drag racing on YouTube, you can see these cars lift the front wheels and stuff. You're like, wow, how can that happen? That's what's happening is the pinion gear is literally taking the car and wants to take the whole car like a lever and pull it all the way around that ring gear, okay? So ultimately when that happens is if that gets out of whack, it's going to unload your spring, your the, the, the force that your springs put down, it's going to unload that. And it's... And, if it's violent enough, it'll actually shake the car, okay? Bad thing, because it doesn't keep the tires planted. And sometimes, too, if you hear, like, I know on, like, they have those videos, uh, I'm, like, down south, eight, eighth mile, twin, like, quadruple turbo, fucking, like, 5,000 horsepower ridiculousness, where they blow over every five seconds. When you hear those cars leave, you actually go, shh, 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 shh. your tires, literally, you hear the wheel hop. And that's why they lose control and they smash them because they're not keeping the tires planted. So I'm going to try and help you um, to have a starting point uh, to have a, a stock type suspension that's going to work. Um, as far as your ladder bar suspension, there's three link, four link, uh, three link and four link. I really, unless you're going into sevens or eights, you know, or, some, or you have something just a tube chassis car, that's the only application I can see where you really need that. And pretty much your pinion angle is going to be pretty much the same with that too. So without any, without screwing around anymore, here we go. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that that uh, angle finder, okay, this thing, okay. Let me see if I can hold it for you so you can see it, okay. You're going to take it. You're going to take that man magnetic base, okay. You're going to set that thing. You're going to set it down on a snoop of your rear where the drive shaft comes in there's 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 a ledge there it's flat you're going to set it on there actually let me back up a step first thing you want to do is jack the car up put it on jack stands okay take a carpenter level and put it on the roof okay and you're going to ask why why make sure that car is level okay because you want everything to be neutral on that car you want everything to be zero okay so put the car up on jack stands so you can work under it Okay, but at the same time, you might have to put, you know, wood or something underneath your jack stands to make sure that car is level. Set a level on the, the roof of your car to make sure it's, le it's at zero. Okay, then what you're going to want to do is go to Harbor Freight, get a cheapy angle finder. Okay, with a magnetic base that you can stick on the snoot of that, that uh, rear. Okay, so stick that there and see what it says. Okay, 
And what you should have, you want that snoot actually to go down in the front. Anywhere from two and a half to three degrees negative pinion angle, which means it's going to face down towards the ground. The front of that thing is going to want to face down to the ground. That's how you want it. Because what happens is when you hit the throttle on that thing, it's going to want to do this. It's going to want to lift. Okay. It's going to want to lift that rear up because remember that pinion gear is trying to climb around that ring gear. Okay, so it's going to do that to a point, but you want to limit how much that's going to climb up because you don't want it too high because then it's going to load your suspension and cause the wheel hop. But you want to have it climb up a little bit because you want weight transfer on those tires so they plant. So two and a half to three degrees negative uh, pinion angle. Now, the more you go towards three, the more violent that thing is going to leave. So actually on my car, the last time I checked, it was like two and three quarter, you know, two and a half. So, which is okay. I mean, I'm not, it's not a high horsepower car. So two and a half, probably in most cases, if it's a, if it's a car you can drive on the street, two and a half is probably fine. Uh, you could probably go two and three quarter and you'll be just as fine too. So start with your pinion angle of getting it between two and a half and three degrees negative pinion angle. Okay. Start with that. The next thing I want to talk about is preloading the suspension. How do I do that? Well, let me give you an idea. This is what I do on here, okay, on my Camaro. I put um, airbags. Airlift makes them, and I'm sure there's other companies. Airbags that you actually put inside your coil spring, okay? Put them inside there. Run your airlines separate, okay? So, in other words, you're going to have an air, air valve for the left and an air valve for the right. Now, the reason you want them separate it's because you're going to preload, which means you're going to put more air in one airbag than the other, okay? And I'll tell you why. Because what happens is, is when you hit the throttle on this on this thing, what happens is, is let me see, that the motor is actually going to lift up on the driver's side, okay? If you watch, open the hood on your car, start it up, let it run, whack the throttle. Watch that motor. It's gonna want if it's if it's a rear wheel drive car, it's gonna it's gonna you know the driver's side is gonna lift up, which means your whole chassis is gonna lift up like that, okay? Which means all your weight now is put on this corner, okay? Because your 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 chassis is torquing over what they call. So what you want to do is you want to put more air. In this airbag than you do in this one okay so for your for any car if you put airbags in you're going to want to put anywhere from 10 to 15 I like to split in the middle so I like to put 12 pounds of air in the airbag over here 5 to 10 over here so I like I like 7 okay so what ends up happening is, is now you got it staggered. So when that thing torques over, it's going to take the weight from over here and shift it over here. When you, when you hit the loud pedal, the car will actually, if you have that five pounds of stagger from left to right of air pressure, that car should leave straight, okay? Um, and if not, play around, little in incremental. But I find five to seven pound difference is probably going to get you pretty damn straight down the track. So I would say um, uh, do with that, okay? Uh, the other thing is adjustable shocks in the rear. Uh, well, you know what? Let me restate that. If, you're, if your car is a daily driver, uh, I had a daily driver. I bought 50-50 drag shocks for the rear, and you know what? They work fine for driving on the street for, like, my weekend cruiser. Um, if you're building an all-out race car, uh, adjustable shocks are good um, basically the 50 50 shocks they're one rate and that's it you can't change them so you pull them up forget about them adjust your suspension with the airbags um, with the adjustable shocks what I would suggest doing is I would suggest um, starting in the middle like I have 12 position adjustable single adjustable shocks on my car so when I put the rear together, I had, um, I started at six, right in the middle, okay? And then see what your 60 foot is, okay? Go to test and tune, make a pass, see what your 60 foot is. And then keep tightening them up, okay? From six, go to seven, go to eight, go to nine. 
when your 60 foot starts getting slower, back down a notch, okay? That's about where you should be on adjustable shocks. But they're also more pricey. So honestly, if you're somebody who's a little tight on cash and the, the bankroll really isn't there to blow on adjustable shocks, go get yourself a set of 50-50s and some airbags. Airbags are about $150, $170. Um, it's something you can do in probably a, you know, an hour and a half. You know, put the airbags in the springs, run the airlines, run the drill two holes for the valves. Now you have your preload situation taken care of. Buy yourself a set of you know nice 50-50 drag shocks. Throw those on. That might take a half hour, an hour. You know now you got yourself a really nice suspension that you know that that can hook up. Um, <clears throat> also, um, the other thing you might want to do too. I'm I'm looking at some stuff here. Um, if you have a G body car, a GM G body, which is your Monte Carlo, Buick Regal, uh, Monte Carlo. Um, Oldsmobile Cutlass uh, G bodies. Um, <clears throat> one thing I would recommend doing: they have no hop traction bars. Shoot, when I got them, they're probably like 170 bucks. I don't know what they are by now, but there you have to drill a hole in your rear on one of the side flanges. Okay, but they do work. Okay, you just bolt them up, you're done. You know, I and I I don't think I don't even think I ran airbags with that. I think those bolted right in. They took care of the wheel hop. I had some DOT slicks on and hooked real nice, worked real good. So that's something with that. The also big thing too is if you have a leaf sprung car, let's say you have a Nova, Chevelle, anything with a leaf spring rear. Uh, south side traction bars work really good. A lot of guys in uh, stock eliminator run them. That might be something to look into. They're a little pricey, but they're adjustable. Check that out. Uh, if you're a little tight on cash, just get a regular set of cheapy slapper bars that bolt on, on there uh, where the snubber hits the spring eye in the front. Uh, you might want to set that. If you're going to go that route, set the air gap an inch and a half to two inches on those. And that should hold your pinion angle at about in the range uh, of that two and a half to three degrees of uh, negative pinion angle. Uh, so give that a shot. Uh, and see how that works. Just some ideas. Like I said, they're not a cure-all. I'm not saying this is the only way to do a suspension. This is just some things that I saw that work. Um, some things that I've done that work. Like I said, on my car, I, it's, I put a little more money in than probably I should have. And it works good. Um, you know, find what works for you. But that's just some suggestions. But the most important thing is that pinion angle. If you can keep that pinion angle where it needs to be, that car has no choice but to hook. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully, uh, you, you know, you're able to get out there in the garage and tinker around and, uh, you know, get, get your car dialed in, head to the track, have some fun. So um, I will talk with you guys later. Take care of yourselves, all right? We'll see you. Bye-bye.